Hi, this is Dr. Colella. I'm your medical director. I wanted to take a few minutes of time today to discuss the ALPS trial that's currently underway in Milwaukee County. As you know, ALPS stands for the Amiodarone Lidocaine Placebo Study. The purpose of the study is to see if any one of these antiarrhythmic agents or placebo has any outcome advantage compared with its other. Now, uh, the ALPS trial is administered under ROC, the Research Outcomes Consortium. ROC is a collection of investigators uh, throughout North America who try to grapple and answer questions related to resuscitation uh, science and medicine. Um, ROC has been responsible for a number of uh, current practices in resuscitation medicine throughout the world and the work of stakeholders like Milwaukee County participating with ROC have led to some of the innovations which we see worldwide in resuscitative science. When a clinical question gets posed to ROC, ROC collects a group of investigators, researchers, other experts in the field, and they're tasked with going through the world's literature to understand what the science is that supports a practice or a potential practice. After they vet that process, they develop a protocol. The protocol goes through a number of committees within ROC and ultimately, uh, once finalized, goes to the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA is responsible for overseeing uh, the various safety and operational aspects that are involved in these trials. As you can imagine, it's, a, it's quite a rigorous process. Um, once the FDA is through their uh, evaluation process, it gets returned to ROC, and then ROC disseminates the protocol to its various um, uh, member organizations throughout North America. As you know, the Medical College of Wisconsin and Milwaukee County EMS are partners, and we're one of a handful of sites across, across North, North America that participates in these trials. Now, once a, once, um, a research protocol is brought into a local community, it's then the responsibility of the uh, local ROC to uh, vet it through its respective uh, academic centers, institutional review board. Um, in this jurisdiction, we use the Medical College of Wisconsin, and their institutional review board is committed to understanding the safety, risks, and benefits of any trial that's posed under the auspices of uh, the medical faculty. In addition to that oversight, their key, um, uh, their key goal is to make sure that there is respect of persons uh, affected by these trials. The Institutional Review Board is composed of a number of various uh, members. They include physicians, researchers, uh, other academics, clergy, um, lay, lay person, uh, as well as ethicist. And again, what they do is they go through and vigorously understand how the uh, protocol would impact the local community. Uh, it's quite a, a, quite a challenging uh, a job, as you can imagine, and its focus, again, is to ensure that there's constant respect of persons and that the risk and benefit of any trial is appropriate. For the ALPS trial, it did go through uh, the first level of the MCW's Institutional Review Board. As part of that IRB, another important task to understand um, in terms of the vetting process is that the, the, po the protocol has to go out to community consultation. Now, community consultation is a process in which the researchers are required to poll the community that's affected by the research trial and make sure that there is an adequate representation of the community um, engaged in the process. So what the researchers do is understand the demographics for Milwaukee County in terms of age and race and other ethnicities and make sure that they um, continue to uh, reach out to all populations in Milwaukee County and get a, a, a sample of that population to understand any concerns that the public may have. The ALPS trial did go through the community consultation and there was adequate representation from all of the various uh, um, um, demographics within Milwaukee County. Also as part of that IRB process, the researchers are required to do two things. 
Uh, they do a random digit dialing method where they, uh, they call uh, different uh, people also in the same demographic to make sure that they understand uh, the, the trial and to see if there are any concerns, as well as some focused town hall meetings where uh, the researchers will meet with various stakeholders to understand if there are any questions or concerns about uh, the trial. So again, ALPS has gone through that, uh, that appropriate level of screening as well. The public also has an option to call to uh, participate in the opt-out program. Opt-out essentially allows citizens to decline any participation in any of the ROC trials, including the ALPS trial. The ALPS trial did go through the entire process of both the ROC FTA as well as the MCW IRB board. At the end of that whole process, it then gets uh, re-examined by the leadership at Milwaukee County EMS, which includes its, its administrator, medical director, and other people, as well as some stakeholders through the different uh, EMS agencies that we're working with in the area. So again, it's, it's the intent is to make sure that we screen each step of the way, and especially focusing on providers and patients to understand if there are any concerns. Assuming all of that uh, goes fine, like it did in this uh, circumstance, the research protocol then begins to be implemented. Now, in terms of once the, the research begins, um, the process that happens at that point is pretty rigorous also. Um, it's, it's mandatory that we submit data back to the ROC in a very timely fashion. The purpose of that is there is a data, a data safety monitoring committee. That committee is charged with making sure that as the data comes in, it meets the various benchmarks that are necessary for trial participation. It also allows for um, early termination of the trial, either if there's a positive outcome or a negative outcome before the trial actually concludes. And the purpose of that, again, is to ensure that in near real time, all the safety metrics are met uh, to ensure that uh, the public is protected. So as you can see, there is a pretty rigorous process that's, uh, that um, is necessary to do these kind of trials. And what's especially challenging with out-of-hospital uh, emergency medicine type uh, research protocols is that many of these have to be done without informed consent. So as you can imagine, if you were to participate in most other trials, patients have the option to, uh, to decide to or to consent for that process. But under emergency conditions, um, it's obvious that patients can't necessarily uh, opt in for a trial. So these types of trials are called EFIC. These stand, EFIC stands for Exception from Informed Consent. These are the most rigorous type of trials from an ethics standpoint that any IRB will ever uh, review. As a matter of fact, MCW is probably one of the leading IRBs in the country that specifically deals with ethic trials. So for, for an organization to undergo an ethic approved trial um, does have some testimony and, and credibility because it's the most uh, rigorous uh, screening uh, type of um, process uh, out there. So I, I, I feel especially comforted knowing that that's in place. Now, there are a couple assumptions that I think providers have been struggling with, and that is the placebo arm of this trial. Now, as the trial is designed, you know that we're randomizing between three different interventions, the use of amiodarone, lidocaine, or placebo after refractory VFib or VTAC. Now, some providers have expressed some interest, I'm sorry, some concerns about the placebo arm because they feel like um, they're unsure if this is contributing to any harm. The, the, the piece that I, I do want to reinforce is that at this point, there is no good evidence that suggests any one of these interventions has any benefit or, or uh, outcome advantage compared with the other. And because of that very question, um, ROC and all of the downstream process in terms of IRB approval is, is poised to try to answer that question. We don't know if placebo is any ben more beneficial or harmful than the other two antiarrhythmics. And, and comparatively, the lidocaine or amiodarone may have consequences as well. 
The current American Heart Association guidelines suggest that as it stands now, lidocaine has indeterminate um, outcome benefit, and amiodarone is a, is a class 2B, which says that the risk may equal benefits, but we're really unsure. And the purpose of this trial is to make sure that we are doing no harm by introducing one of these agents compared with another. So there is value and importance to the placebo aspect of this. The placebo is necessary both scientifically and ethically. From a science standpoint, it will help us to understand and make sure that anything that we administer to these patients, whether it's an antiarrhythmic or a placebo, has no harm. And two is, from an ethics standpoint, uh, it's important that we understand the consequence of this because by giving amiodarone, we may be harming patients that we don't know. And again, col the collective world science about the use of these medications is unclear, which is the reason that this question was brought to Rock in the first place. So I was hoping to spend a few minutes just helping you to understand the Rock process and the process in which uh, this type of trial comes to fruition. It is a rigorous trial, and uh, it has been looked at at many different levels by a number of stakeholders. Um, and again, the whole intention of this is to ensure that um, whatever we're using in the treatment of refractory VFib or VTAC is safe and ethical and efficacious. So um, I'd like to uh, also welcome an opportunity if anybody has any questions to talk with me. We'll try another other, a number of other venues to reach out uh, to you. Uh, we're happy to meet with you um, as a group or individually please feel free to call uh, the Milwaukee County EMS office and we could take it from there. Thanks again. Take care.